Okay, today's lesson is going to be about division, and specifically it's I can divide whole numbers using four-digit dividends and two-digit divisors. Okay, so before we get started, let's go ahead and um, zone in to our focus. Our focus today, because there's different ways you can divide, we're going to focus on using partial quotients. All right, so let's start off with some vocabulary first. Let's say we have 1,134 divided by 27 equals something. So my first number, regardless if it's a smaller number or larger number, greater number or lesser number, the first number is always going to be the dividend. The first number you're dividing is the dividend. Um, typically, in elementary school, you'll see that the first number will be a, whole, um, a larger number than the second number, but that's not always true. You can do 1 divided by 2 is 1.5 or 0.5. So you can't take that, um, you can't have a rule saying the first number has to be larger. Typically, it is, but not always. So the first number is the dividend divided by the second number is going to be the divisor. Again, it doesn't always have to be the smaller number, but typically in K through five, you'll see that the second number is smaller, but you're dividing the first number by the second number, the divisor. And then your answer is going to be the quotient. So those are three really important terms, dividend, divisor, and quotient. Dividend, divisor, and quotient. All right, let's go ahead and get started with partial quotients. So partial quotients is dividing, or it's division, but instead of arriving at one answer, the full quotient, you're going to arrive at part parts of the whole or parts of the um, final answer parts of the quotient so it's called partial quotients so you set up your problem right and inside the little den or the little cave is your dividend then you have your divisor on the outside and you draw your little bar on the side okay so you think you start off, you have your dividend, your divisor, and you're going to start to divide. So using partial quotients, you use um, multiples of tens or easy numbers to multiply in your head. So you have the number 27. How many times can 27 go into 1,134? Now the first thing I want to try is multiplying by a power of 10. The highest power of 10. So. 10 is easy, right? 10 times 27 is 270. But I'm not going to try 270 because that's too small. Let's try 100. 27 times 100 is 2,700. Okay, that's too big, right? All right, let's, instead of going to 10, let's try 20. So off to the side, I'm going to do 27 times 20. Adding in my zero because it's by a power of 10. 540. Mm, still too small. Let's try 27 times 40. So 27 times 4. 10,080. Or excuse me, 1,080. That definitely will go in. So I'm going to use 40 as my first partial product. So on the right side of the line, I'm going to write the partial, sorry, not products, quotients, partial quotient, and I'm going to write what I multiply these two to get this number to subtract. So four, regroup. Fifty-four is left. How many times can twenty-seven go into fifty-four? Twice, right? Two times. 27 times 2 is 54. Subtract, but I have a 0. You're going to add your partial quotients together to get your final quotient, which is 42. 
Now with division, you always, 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 always want to check your work, check your answer. So multiply your quotient by your divisor to get your dividend to make sure you got the right answer. So 42 times 27, 42 times 27. Oops, 28, 29, the place value, 4, 8, 4, 3, regroup. 1,134, 1,134, check, check my work. So when you look at dividing whole numbers by four digit dividends and two digit dividers, which is the fifth grade standard, looking at partial quotients, remember the first number is the dividend, division symbol, the divisor is the second number, you're dividing this first number into that many parts. Your quotient is going to be your answer to your division problem. Setting up with partial quotients, your dividend goes in the middle here, your divisor goes on the outside. You're thinking about the dividend as a whole number, so you're not breaking it down individually, thinking of it as a whole number. So 27 can go into 1,134, 40 times to start. I figured out 40 times 27 is 1,080. Subtract it. Keep on going and go in two more times, subtract it, I have zero left, add the partial quotients, double check my work, and then I arrive at the same answer. All right, let's do one more. Oh. Using partial quotients again, let's see, let's do... 7,140 divided by 35. All right, so check, um, practice yourself real quick. What are these called? What's this one called? What's this one called? And what's this one called? That first number is always going to be called the dividend. The second number is called the divisor. You're dividing the dividend. And the answer to a division problem is the quotient. Okay, partial quotients. You're finding parts of the quotient or parts of the answer before you find the final answer. Or final quotient. So we have 7,140 divided by 35. And create a little tail or however you want to call that line down. Okay, 35. Can 35 go into 7,140? Of course it can, but we're trying to figure out some easy ways to um, figure out how many times 35 can go into 7,140. My first clue is to look for multiples of 10. Now, I can definitely do 35 times 100. This is just my mental math. So 35 times 1 is 35. 35 times 10 is 350. And then 35 times 100 is 3,500. And I know that 3,500 can definitely go in. So I can definitely um, divide 35 into 7,140 100 times. But check out this number. What if I doubled this? So 35 times 200, so I'm doubling this, 7,000, for sure. So 35 can go into 7,140 200 times. I'm writing my partial quotient on the outside. 35 times 200 is 7,000. Subtract. 35 into 140. Hmm. Let's think. If 35 times 2 is 7, 35 times 2 is 7, or 35 times 20 is 700, but that's too much. What if I thought 35 just times 2 is 70? Now if I multiply that again and again, that'll get me 140. Because I know that 2 times 7 is 14, and 35 times 2 times 2 is 140. So 35 times 4 has 140. 
I'm going to add my partial quotients, 200 plus 4, that's 204. Before I write down my answer, I'm going to make sure that I have the correct answer by double checking my work. This is now the quotient, so 204 times the divisor because division and multiplication are inverse operations. Let's check it out. Seven thousand one hundred and four. Seven thousand one hundred and four. Whoops. So, for partial quotients, it's very similar to the standard um, algorithm for division. The only difference is the spots and the order of where you place your numbers. So typically, you'd write your answers per se up here. But instead, with partial quotients, you write it off to the right-hand side. You're still subtracting and bringing things down. The only difference is you're finding each individual part of the whole or part of the quotient or part of the answer step by step, and then you're adding them together at the end. Instead of writing like a 2, a 0, and then a 4, you write 204. So the conceptual um, aspect is easier for partial quotients, but you just got to retrain your brain if you're used to the standard algorithm. Right, and that's it.